Disclaimer, I'm not a professional. I'm only basing this tutorial on my past five years of trial and error working with this DAW. So I apologize if I explain a few things incorrectly. This has been requested a lot and I would like to help those who requested this as best as I possibly can. Hey everyone, this is Kamix and I will be showing you around the DAW that I use to make remixes. The one I'm currently using is FL Studio 12. I bought the signature bundle not too long ago which comes with 16 extra VSTs on top of the ones that come with the producer edition. It's going to run you at $299, and the base model, which is the producer edition, is $199, so I suggest you make sure you're going to use it as your main DAW before you spend such a large amount, because that is a lot of money. If you want to give it a try before you buy, I suggest getting the demo version, which is free and has no time limit. The only problem is, you can only save projects, but cannot reopen them. And some other people would suggest there's a different way, but I don't want to get into the whole controversial argument where no one wins, so let's move on for now. In this video, I'll be showing you around the DAW and showing you basically all the things you need to know to start out. If there's something you want to learn about specifically, click on the label of that part of the DAW in the screenshot, and it'll take you straight to the timestamp of that explanation. So let's start with the top bar. I'll be honest, if I were to explain what each and every button on this bar does, we'll be here all day, so I'll just let you know what the more frequently used things do. Here is where you can change the tempo, aka a number that indicates how fast or how slow the song is. Here's the metronome. It makes a clicking sound to the tempo you selected to ensure that the notes line up with the tempo correctly. Here is where you can select a certain pattern you created, and if you wanted to create a new one, click the plus sign here. Moving on to the browser. This is the browser. It's mostly where your samples and synths that you've created in VSTs will go. To have all of your samples in the sidebar, Please make sure to put all of your samples in a place where you will not move the files because that will cause a lot of issues if you move the files after placing them in your inventory. To place them in your inventory, have the folder of your samples open and just drag and drop them onto the sidebar. And there you go. They are there when you need them. It's a very quick and easy way to grab a sample that you need without digging into your PC's files and finding them yourself. Moving on to the channel rack. This is where you compose each pattern individually. Whether it be a melody, a bass line, or a drum pattern, it all goes here. If you want to add an instrument to the channel rack, simply go to the top toolbar, click Add, then click Channel, and then choose whatever plugin you want to use. Then you're good to go. You can even rename or recolor the instrument for organization purposes. If you want to input notes using said instrument, go to the channel rack, right click that specific instrument, and then click Piano Roll. Which brings us to the Piano Roll. Here you can input your notes and change the velocity. When you right click the bottom where the velocity is, you have many other options to play with, but bear in mind the velocity only works for some plugins. Typically this stuff would work only with FL native plugins and samples. When putting a note down you can drag the right side of it to make the note the length you want it to be. Remember that this will only work for instruments and synths that can be held out for that long. So basically, if you try to make a pluck go out for that long, it would make no sense unless that pluck has like some sort of tail end or something. Here's a thing with a magnet pointing down. It makes it so the grid is smaller and you can make smaller notes in case you want them to be even shorter or you want to be more precise. Let's say you've created a melody, a bass line, a chord progression, and you want to know where to put it all together. And this is where the pattern playlist comes in. This is where you arrange your patterns and put all the different components to your song in. A lot of things can be put here. Patterns, samples, automation clips, all of that stuff goes here. I know a lot of people who only compose in the channel rack, and while that works just as fine, there are some benefits to using the pattern playlist, such as you can chop certain melodies so you won't have to copy and paste them over and over again. You can automate effects so that you'll have full control over what effects you want and how long they affect the instrument for. Very easy for organization so that if you don't want certain instruments to play at that time, it's much easier to control that. You can be like me and screenshot the project and post it on social media and act like you actually know what you're doing. Or do one of these videos. Alright, alright, let's actually be serious again for a second. So, let's move on to the mixer track. This is your best friend when it comes to making all of your instruments work together well, in a sense that they're all heard clearly and do not interfere with each other. First of all, this is the master track. Any effects put on this track will be put on the whole thing. Like for example, if you put reverb on the master track, reverb will be put on basically every instrument in this song. Also, be extremely careful, because there is also one to the left of it called the current track. 
Any effects put on this one will be on the currently selected track. If you accidentally misclicked and then put like, I don't know, a phaser on that track, there will be a phaser on every mixer track that you have currently selected. You're gonna wonder why the fuck there is a phaser on basically everything you click on when really it's just on the current track, like at the very left of the mixer, so be careful with that. I highly recommend that you take each VST, sample, sound effect, whatever you have into its own mixer track, because then you can control the volume, add effects, EQ them to mix them properly, and so on. To do that, you'll have to go back to the channel rack, right click the instrument you want to put in a mixer track, and then you go to the mixer track itself, right click the track, and go to channel routing, route selected channels to this track. You can put multiple instruments on one mixer track if you would like, and if you can't be bothered to do the mundane task of right clicking over and over again, you can highlight as many tracks as you want by clicking this little thing here <laughs> between the instrument name and the pattern box, drag it down, go to the mixer track, and right click. Go to channel routing, route select the channel starting from this track, and boom, it's all there in that exact order. On the far right, there is a section where you can put up to 10 effects on one mixer track. Just click the arrow, select your plugin. Keep in mind that the order of these effects will have varying results. For example, if you put reverb on a track first and then EQ it, you're EQing the reverb effect as well. Or if you EQ first and then add reverb, you are already adding a reverb effect onto the already EQ'd instrument. So I think I might have covered just about every section that a beginner would use. So um, I really hope this is helpful for you guys. Like anyone who was confused with the user interface, I hope that this might have cleared something up for you guys. And uh, if you have any questions, I'll try to the best of my ability to answer them in the comments. So just let me know and I'll, you know, try my best to help you out. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.